What is up people, Phoenix here. Um, recently I've been studying Shanghainese and since I'm traveling to, to Fujian, to Trenzhou next month, I've also re-initiated my studies of the Hokkien language. I was like, hey, I've studied four different dialects of the Chinese language or, or four different Chinese languages. That is uh, Mandarin, my native tongue, and Cantonese, standard Cantonese, and Shanghainese, a dialect of Wu Chinese, and Hokkien. So today I want to share with you my experiences with these four different dialects, languages. For people who are not familiar with the Chinese language, I rather think of Chinese not as a single language, but a language family. That is to say, the differences between Cantonese or Wu Chinese and standard Mandarin are way bigger than, let's say, the differences between Portuguese and Spanish, or Portuguese and French. And there are a lot of sub-dialects within these big dialect groups. There are a lot of dialects of Wu Chinese. For example, Shanghainese belongs to the Taihu dialect of Wu Chinese. Another point I want to bring up is that, uh, in contrast to the popular belief that some dialects are more pure uh, versions of Chinese than other ones, like for example, a lot of people claim that Cantonese is more pure than Mandarin. I rather think of different Chinese dialects, including Mandarin, as having inherited different properties, uh, both phonetic properties and vocabulary of Middle Chinese and uh, previous versions of the Chinese language. Cantonese has inherited a more complex, more it's preserved a more complex system of, of check tones, Rusheng or Yapsing. Wu Chinese has preserved more consonants of, or the starting consonants of Chinese characters, or even Mandarin dialects, which are often claimed to be, to have been contaminated by languages uh, spoken by non-Chinese speakers who have occupied the current Mandarin speaking uh, regions. Even within Mandarin dialects, they, there are a lot of properties inherited from Middle Chinese. Like my grandpa used to say, 吃上午饭, 上午 means noon, in my dialect, the Dongbei, the northeastern dialect, uh, Shangwu is likely to be to have de been derived from Shangwu, which is a, like a, an older way of saying noon in Chinese. And another a northeastern dialect of Mandarin Chinese, uh, people would say Dao Yi which means to pick up a piece of food with your chopsticks. Zhu, in this case, is a, uh, a word to commonly used in Middle Chinese and Old Chinese. Yeah, so my point is, there's no dialect that's more pure than others. Like all these dialects or all these Chinese languages have inherited different properties from Middle Chinese and Old Chinese. And again, I'm just sharing my, my personal experience with these languages. Uh, I don't have any formal linguistics training, uh, even though I have been exposed to linguistics here and there during my studies. And also, I can't imagine anyone watching this video who wants to learn another Chinese dialect who doesn't speak Mandarin or who is not in the process of speaking Mandarin. So I'm going to use uh, Mandarin Chinese as the base case and compare the, the other three different dialects with Mandarin Chinese. And I want to compare the levels of difficulty of these dialects mainly in two different aspects. That is vocabulary and phonetics. So in terms of phonetics, I think uh, Cantonese is the easiest, probably. It has uh, 20 consonants and 11 vowels. It has six tones, and uh, like I said, it's inherited a quite complex yep sing system of check tones. And Shanghainese has 28 consonants and 32 vowels, and, but it has only five tones. And I'm aware there are other dialects within the Wu Chinese group that have way more complex tone systems, like a lot of the, the local dialects, Bang Die Wu, uh, like in Pudong, the Pudong dialect has 11 tones, I think. And I'm aware that the, the Suzhou dialect has something like seven tones. And Hokkien, man, the amount of phonemes in the Hokkien language is notorious. It has 14 consonants, but if I remember correctly, uh, Hokkien has 80 something vowels. You know, it's just, it's just a, a crazy amount of different phonemes that you have to get used to. A lot of them I still have trouble pronouncing, that I physiologically I don't have the capacity to pronounce all of the phonemes in the language yet. One of the things 
uh, Wu Chinese and Hokkien share is that the, th the tones change when two characters are combined. That phenomenon is also pres present in Mandarin. In Mandarin, when you have two characters of the third tone, uh, for example, Ma Yi, the first character becomes falls on the second tone, Ma Yi. But when they're combined together, it becomes Ma Yi. And, and some special cases like Yi and Bu, which means one and no. Like when they are combined with other characters, uh, they become the second tone, like Yi Ge. This phenomenon is ubiquitous in Hokkien and Shanghainese. Like, whenever two characters are put together, their tones change. That's just such a pain in the ass when you're studying the language. Like, it becomes a, an extremely complex matrix of, 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 of tonal changes. Like, for example, sky in Shanghainese is T. But when you want to say heaven, it becomes T dan, little dumpling soup. But a small dumpling would be That means you cannot remember the tone of one single character. You have to remember either a, a very complex system of tonal changes or you have to use the word or the phrase as the smallest phonetic unit and you have to remember uh, each phrase or word individually. And with, it, with regards to vocabulary, all these dialects have their, their own sets of vocabulary that are distinct in their own respective fashions. Uh, like in Cantonese, you have a lot of words inherited from older Chinese. Like a zhuozi is a, a toy and not a, a zhuozi, a table. A, another famous example is a strawberry, xigobedi. So you have both older Chinese words and uh, imported words. That's the same with Shanghainese. You have words that are, that are distinct to the local dialect. If you want to say something ex expensive, it's not gui, it's ju. Uh, and Chinese also has a lot of, of imported words like um, to chat. Shanghainese is ga se wu, which is a derivative of English word gossip. And another example would be like in Shanghai, in Chinese, if you want to say something is fake, uh, you say da xing, uh, which comes from the English word dashi. Uh, another topic I have to bring up is the, the system of different uh, stratums, the different stratums of, of pronunciation are also known as wen bai du. This phenomenon is also present in Mandarin Chinese, but not as pronounced like in some Chinese dialects like a Korean, uh, a guest uh, is known as Chie. Chie is another way to pronounce the word, the character Ke. Like Chie is the Bai Du, Ke is the, 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 the Wen Du, Xue Ye, Xue, and Xie, Xiao Ping Guo, Xue Ping Guo, you know, things like that. But normally in, in schools now, the more informal way to pronounce the word is uh, rendered incorrect in school. And southern dialects, especially in Wu Chinese and Hokkien, this phenomenon is ubiquitous. Most characters have a formal read and an informal read. Like in Shanghainese, for the for, for character Ren, it could be pronounced Xiao Ning, right, a, a, a child, or it could be Senminbi, which is Renminbi, the Chinese currency. And another example would be the character Da. You could pronounce it as Du Zaha. Or you could pronounce it as a, as in, say, for example, da ga. This problem of different substratums uh, within the dialect is present really in all four dialects that I've studied, and it's present in Mandarin, it's present in Cantonese, but it's not as as pronounced in these two languages as in uh, Hokkien or Ming Chinese and in Wu Chinese or Shanghainese in my case. So I think they have a lot more characters that have multiple pronunciations. And I think Cantonese is relatively easy out of the, these three, um, it, even though it has a complex system of check tones and it doesn't have changing tones. I guess changing tones is really just a bummer. Again, uh, like I said, all of these languages have inherited different properties and um, sets of vocabulary from, from Middle Chinese and earlier versions of, of the Chinese language. And I believe they are equally beautiful as well as the, the, their sub-dialects within these groups and other dialects that I haven't been exposed to. If you have a dialect, a native dialect that is not standard Chinese, I highly encourage you to improve your, your native language. 
if you live in a town that speaks a dialect other than your native one, I also highly encourage you to pick it up. And I, I guarantee you that if you study the local language, you're going to discover a part of the town that you have never seen before. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. Ciao.